Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Designs by Dana. I am Dana and I'm also a Close to My Heart consultant. Today I'm working on day seven of Christy's Beautiful Life October 30 Day Sketch Challenge. This is a sketch created by Karen Leahy and this is what the sketch looks like. It seems to be a relatively simple sketch, but I have um, quite a bit of embellishing and coloring that I'm planning to do with this sketch. So let me put the sketch aside and I'm gonna bring in my trusty Versamat here and my base page. Now, normally I will use white for my base pages. Today I'm using a linen and I'm using the light side of the linen, so it's not quite a stark white. And you'll notice that I've already done some pre-stamping. And I wanted to do that off camera because just in case it didn't stamp um, as perfect of an image as I wanted, um, that would give me opportunity to fix that. So I've got her pre-stamped and I was very happy with how that turned out. And luckily it worked perfectly on the first try. And she comes from this really cute stamp set called Scrappy Lady. It is retired, so I pulled it out of my stash, but I thought that um, it would look really good with the photo that I'm going to use. And this is a photo of a fellow close to my heart maker and she was in town visiting a while back and we decided to um, have some scrapbooking photos taken for some marketing purposes and having some fun here in my scrapbook studio. So this is the photo we're going to work with and um, this is obviously the stamped image here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color her with markers. So I've brought in several of my Triblend markers, which are my favorite. I absolutely love these markers. If you've not used them before, you know you may or may not know that there are actually three colors within each marker. There's a light, a medium, and a dark shade. So if you like to blend and you're a fan of coloring like myself, these really give you the opportunity to create very realistic and artistic looking pieces of artwork and they blend fantastically. So what I have here, I'll just kind of go through my colors real quick. I have a coral blend, a gold yellow blend, a gold brown shades. Um, this is a muted brown blend, fair skin blend. Obviously she's gonna be fair skinned like I am true blue blend, true blue shades, and a tan blend. And then I also pulled in a metallic silver marker because I have some little embellishment pieces that I'm going to color in and hand cut. I'm gonna fussy cut those out to set up on her desk as well. So I don't wanna make you sit and watch all of this coloring because it does take me a little while to do the blending that I like to do. So I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'll come back and show you the completed colored in um, project. So we'll be right back with that colored in um, project. Okay, I've gotten everything colored in. I'm just gonna hold this up a little bit closer to the camera so you can see how I've colored that in. With these small spaces, it's really hard to do a lot of shading, but normally when I color an object in, I think about where my light source is coming from. So if it's coming from this way, I'll do the darker uh, pieces on this side, or if the light source is coming from this way, I'll do the darker, darker shades on this side, which is what you can see I did here with the legs of the table. Now, when I'm doing people, I think more of their skin and where the darker part of their skin would be. So you'll notice on her legs here, the darker part of the leg would be more on the top of the leg. And since her legs are crossed, there's a little bit more shading here on the top of the leg and then down here. So I really didn't consider where my light source was coming from when I shaded her skin. 
I considered more of where I thought she would be a little bit more tan from natural lighting. So, sorry, I don't know if you just saw the cat ran through, but she likes to get my videos. And you may notice that her top part of her dress is not colored. And what I did here is I stamped the original image on my base page. And then I also stamped it a couple extra times on some pattern paper. So here I have a real pretty blue and floral pattern. And it's very hard to tell with her dress, but it is a pink floral um, tone on tone pattern. And then I cut those out really, really close to the black line, like on the line, very precisionly. And then I paper piece those. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the rest of that process and put the top part of her dress together. So you can see here how closely to the line I've cut that and how um, careful you have to be when you are cutting those out. So when I do that, I like to use my micro tip scissors here from close to my heart. And for this glue, I'm using the Barely Art glue that I got on Amazon because that fine tip. And if I've cut this close enough, I can just lay it right down on top of the original image. And you can see it just fits right around the pieces that I've colored. And it just gives a little extra touch and texture to her outfit. So sometimes I will do that when I want more of a pattern on a project and I can mix and match where I color it in and I can paper piece it. So clothes and things like that can have more of a pattern. So I think that's kind of a fun little technique. So let me put the little pen in my glue here and we'll move on to the next step. So what I'm gonna do now is just bring in all of my pre-cut pieces of paper and start laying this out. So this was actually a really old paper packet and I'm so excited that I'm kind of killing that kit. So this will be the last bit of paper that I use from this paper packet. And I'm super, super excited about that. I also wanted to show you that this was a picture my life card that came out of this paper packet. And it's one I will probably never ever use, but I liked that it had this nice sapphire border. So I started to get up and pull out a piece of sapphire cardstock, and then I noticed this, and I thought, well, that will work perfectly because I'm not gonna need that center part for my photo mat. So I just trimmed about an eighth of an inch off of my photo and it worked perfectly for my photo mat, just like that. So um, good way to use up those bits and pieces that you may not necessarily think of when you're getting rid of those things you wouldn't use in your packets. So I've got my title. This was also a picture my life card and I just trimmed it down and stamped my title right onto it. And I've got several little pennant pieces down here to tuck under, make sure everything's kind of centered a little bit. And I'm doing this part pretty much based on the sketch itself. And I decided to layer a couple of stitched circles that I used from my stitched thin cuts to go up here and it had some pennants coming out of here. And I used another stamp set that's really, really old in my stash. And this is called Miss Scrapbook. And it had lots of fun sentiments. So um, I'm using Crop Till You Drop. And this one says Scrap Happy. So I thought those would be fun to kind of stick out of there as opposed to just plain um, pennants. And then this one says Scrapbook Friends, and I thought I would stick that down here as kind of a subtitle. So this one is super old, but I couldn't part with it because it had to do with scrapbooking, so it is sticking around in my stash. So this is my basic 
um, layout design based on the sketch. And then what I'm gonna do before I start gluing everything down is, um, Siri's trying to talk to me. I'm going to add just a little bit more color to my base page. And I'm gonna do that by using a brush and I'm just going to ink in a little extra color. Um, so I'm gonna do some of that kind of down in this area. So now I can just kind of slide this up and blend some of that in. This color I'm using is Retired, it's Smoothie, which is the same color as this, um, this paper here. So like I said, this is a pretty old packet, so I'm finally getting rid of it. But I always keep my Retired inks because I have several old packets um, in my stash, and if I'm using an old paper packet, it's likely I might need one of the old inks to coordinate with it. So I don't wanna not have an ink color that I need. And I'm also a hoarder, so <laughs> I keep everything. I'm just gonna extend this out maybe just a little bit more. There we go. And then I also plan to add a little bit of embellishing in this area. So I think I'm going to, to kind of complete my visual triangle, add just a little bit um, over here. And I'm gonna bring in a piece of scrap paper to kind of tap off on. And maybe right in here, just real lightly. You don't want a lot. I think that'll do it. And I think I'm just gonna add some color down in here just to give her a little bit of a flooring to anchor her down so she's not necessarily just floating um, in the air because sometimes that can look a little bit odd when you have an image just kind of floating around on a page. So just kind of kind of anchor her in with some color there. That looks good. Okay. So the next step is to get everything glued down. So we'll get that glued down and then we'll be able to come back and finish off with our embellishing. Now that everything is glued down, it's time to embellish the layout. What I have here is some of our brand new wood grain arrows and I'm going to add some of those to the layout, but what I'd like to do first is color them blue to match my sapphire cardstock and put a couple of them over here, similar to how the sketch um, was designed. So I'm bringing back in my True Blue Blend marker, and I found that it's much easier to color them while they're still on this carrier sheet because they do fall out very easily. So while they're on the sheet, I'm just gonna come in here and marker right over the wood grain and then I can get the color that I'd like to have. And this will just take me a second to give those the color and I might need to go just a shade darker to match that sapphire and I think that I do so let me just try actually I'm gonna go to the dark much better I just love that these markers have the three shades so if one's not dark enough Surely the other one or two will be. And this gives me a lot to work with. And I can just add more layers of color right on top to continue to darken them if I need to. I'm gonna do that just a little bit here. And now I can put these on the layout. So I'm gonna bring back in my tweezers, of course, because these are so tiny. And my plan is to lay them over here in this area to balance out some of that blue. And 
And I'm also just going to kind of look around the layout and see if there are any other places that I'd like to position some of these little arrows. And I was thinking about maybe, this one just wants to fall out, up here at the top, perhaps. And I'm just kind of looking around my sheet to see what I have here. And I'm thinking maybe one of these might be kind of neat to maybe put it, point it down here as in making things happen in the photo. So I'm gonna do that. And since it's already out of its carrier, I'm just gonna come over here and do it on the plastic. So I don't ruin any paper. I guess I could bring in my scrap paper, it might have been a better idea. Let me do that real quick. These are the close to my heart tweezers and they are the greatest thing since sliced bread when it comes to trying to pick up and hold these small pieces. I just love them. So let's go ahead and just kind of lay this one up here where we think we might want that there. And maybe just to kind of finish out our visual triangle, maybe something over here as well. Um, this one's kind of unique. I'm just going to audition it. It's, I'm not like a real big fan of it, so I don't think I like that there. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe just a small, smaller arrow or maybe two as I audition. There we go, I like that. So let's go over to our scrap and color these in real quick and then we can get them glued down. And we'll finish out our embellishing. If you guys have used these tri-blend markers, I would love to know your thoughts. If you'd like to put in the comments if you've used them and if you like them, and perhaps if there are other markers that you've tried and have found that you really like. And this would also be a good time to remind you to hit that like button if you are enjoying my videos and as well as the subscribe button. I appreciate the support of you liking and subscribing to my videos and love to have comments and know where you're from and feedback on any of my work. Love to know what people like and not necessarily don't like, but what preferences are. So I think I like that as far as my um, arrows go. So I'm not gonna overdo it. I wanna keep this particular layout a little bit simplified. So the last thing I wanna do to finish off my embellishing is just add in a couple little stamped speckles. So this is a stamp I have out of the background elements. It is in the new core catalog, so it's currently available. I'm just using this stamp right here, and I'm just going to random stamp that in a couple places. Um, I think this sketch had it down here a little bit, and I wanna say it might've been up here. I'm gonna turn it around this time. I'm going to turn it both ways and I think I'll go ahead and do one over here as well just kind of right behind those pieces and actually I have already cut this because I needed to cut it for another project 
So I'm gonna just fill in that spot right there and that looks perfect. So don't be afraid to cut your stamps because I did one where I wanted just the bigger spots instead of the smaller. And I just cut that in half and then I can put it right back together. So super, super easy. And I also have a couple little gems I'm gonna add to the layout just because why not? You know, this is a girl layout, so why not put some gems on it? So let's get, I like to use my paper piercer because it makes them easy to pick up and put down for me, but everybody does it a little differently. And I also like to try to do things in threes, but I don't always do so. Let's see, where do I want this one to go? And I just feel like she needs a little bling over here by her. So let's give her a little bling. So all we have left to do, I believe, is glue down our embellishments and we will be finished. Okay, our project is complete. I got everything glued down and I decided that I felt like these little arrows here were just kind of floating out in space, even though I kind of anchored them down with uh, the ink there. I came back in and did some faux stitching here with my navy le pen and since I added it there I thought I would add a little bit more up here in this corner and down here in this corner keeping true to my visual triangle there. So everything's adhered and I've got some of the things popped up with 3D foam tape here. This is double popped and this is popped up here and then on my little table I popped up the um, pencil case and the books. The lampshade or the lamp here was just a little too tiny for me to get that popped up but I'm happy with how my paper piecing turned out there and she's got more texture in her outfit and hopefully that is showing up for you on camera. So this is a great way to create a layout using very little paper. And I wanted to mention, even though I created my strips um, full stripped because I had the paper and I wanted to kind of kill out that kit, if you had very little paper, you could just cut small strips and this would be a great layout for just scraps. So I wanted to share that idea with you as well. I hope you like the layout. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Leave me any comments that you might have. I'd love to read them. Thank you so much for watching today and have a wonderful day. Bye.